Well, for a second there, I was hoping they expanded the tournament. You know, it'd be the 66th team called. Um, you know, a little tension in the room. But um, you know, I think it's uh, it's well earned. You know, we uh, we had our backs against the wall about two and a half weeks left in the season, and our team went seven and three or seven and four down the stretch. We um, we lose to Creighton in a home game, and you know, from there, our, our team really began to play big-time basketball. And we played and, and beat some terrific teams, some tournament teams, uh, to beat Providence, to go on the road and beat Cincinnati, to, to come back and dismantle Butler like we did at home. Um, you know, to go on the road when everybody was saying we had to, had to uh, win at Creighton, do it on senior night. I just think our team um, really responded uh, how, how you'd like your team to respond in the face of adversity, in the face of... Um, hey, do or die time. And I, I thought our guys uh, played really well this weekend. You know, we ran into a buzzsaw uh, last night. A team that, in my mind, is a legitimate Final Four uh, national championship caliber team. And, you know, we, we had, you know, played three games in three days, and, and so did they. But, uh, you know, their experience and their, their, their talent level uh, really showed. But it was a good experience for our guys. We made a heck of a run in, in, in New York and uh, were uh, extremely uh, grateful. You know, for where we're at in the tournament, but it really doesn't matter if you're seated 16 or one or five or eight. You just everybody's zero and zero, and you got to go and play. And we'll play on Thursday, uh, whatever time uh, and whatever opponent we face. Yeah, you always split up the options um, that you you could face that first weekend. Um, so. Uh, we'll do the same thing. You know, there's there's four possible opponents. Obviously, only two. Uh, the first the first game you play, and it could be the only game you play. So, um, you know, we'll have an assistant scout each of them, and we'll do our best once we know the winner to prepare our team. We we won't necessarily uh, we won't have our team prepare for two teams. That's just uh, that's a waste of time. Those guys aren't interested in coaching clinics. They're they're interested in playing. Do you know anything about BYU? Uh, well, you know, if you start with BYU, um, you know, they've been the talk of are they going to get in, are they not? Same, same with Ole Miss. And so, you know, th them playing in the um, finals versus Gonzaga, late night game, you know, I, ha I happened to watch a part of that game. So, um, you know, and I'm no I've known Coach Rose for a while. You know that they're one of the best offensive teams each and every year. You also know they're one of the oldest teams each and every year. And, um, to have a player on their team that doesn't necessarily get the recognition uh, that you would think that's that's outscored Jimmer for debt in his career is is it's it's hard to believe because of all the publicity and hype that Jimmer for for debt get, got and well earned and this guy scored more points than Tyler Halls and so I, I know they're up and down I know they they share the ball they shoot it incredibly well and then on the other side of the coin you have Ole Miss who you know I think uh, is a terrific rebounding team very athletic. Got a couple guys and Stephon Moody, and they, they can really, really score the ball. So um, it'd be an entertaining matchup, and hopefully it goes into about an eight or nine overtime game. And um, you know the plane breaks down, and they have to call in another one. And they roll in at game time on Thursday. Well, not so much just to – do you mean in terms of the seed and, and whatnot? I think, you know, when you play three top 25 teams uh, in three days and you're able to beat two of the three, uh, it says a lot about the makeup of our team and how much better we've gotten over the years. If you take out Villanova in the equation, you know, we lost two three times. Uh, we went 6-0 against the top 25 teams this year, uh, which, you know, there, there are teams that, that made the tournament that don't have a single top 25 win all year. So – our team is more than capable. Um, I think our team's done a terrific job, and we've had to battle back. We've had to bounce back. And, um, you know, there were a lot of tears in the locker room last night. And um, it's bad to see on one hand, but it's good to see on, on, on another. I mean, that, that game meant a lot to our program, meant a lot to the kids in the locker room. And, um, you know, I think they're going to be ready to go and itching to get rid of that feeling on Thursday. I think so. 
I do. I think it's probably too early for me to say uh, definitely either way. But I, I do know that he feels remarkably better today than he did, um, you know, last night. And so um, JP's got a high, high pain tolerance, which when he went down, I knew he wasn't returning that night. I knew, I knew he wasn't going back in the game, you know, because he gets hurt every day in practice and bounces right back and jumps in, doesn't say anything. So, uh, but uh, I don't think it's severe enough to where he won't be able to play on Thursday, but I, I don't know that yet. Thought it was very deserving. I mean, Jalen is, um, uh, he's playing great. He's staying out of foul trouble for the most part. He's as competitive a, a, of a player as we have on our team. He plays a huge chip on his shoulder, sometimes a, a little bit too large of a chip. But I'd rather have that than, than somebody that um, doesn't care, that isn't passionate. Uh, and, you know, he's our energy. And he comes in off the bench. He does a great job. He picks up the energy level of his teammates. He affects things at the rim on both ends of the floor. He finishes plays. Um, he's a tough cat. And he's playing really well right now. A lot, a lot. You know, it's um, Digger Phelps said it. Hey, the only the only games that people remember are the ones you play in March, and uh, I don't want to say it's sad, but true. But it, but it, it's true, and um, it doesn't mean that that we as coaches won't appreciate all the sacrifices and, and all the hard work that our players put in, and who they became, and, and how they left our program, and D and Matt. Um, but that is how you're thought of. You know, how, how you go out, um, what kind of run you make. If you remember, when, when Xavier uh, went to its first Elite Eight, uh, people were booing Lionel Chalmers off the floor in that same senior year. And um, they weren't booing him too uh, loudly in middle to late March when they went to the Elite Eight. So, uh, again, it's, it's a one game at a time. You know, a lot of times it's all about matchups in the tournament um, and, and who really starts playing their best basketball down the stretch, and I, I do like the way our team's playing. Uh, I really like the way we're playing, but uh, you know we're gonna have to play that way on Thursday. Honestly, I don't even know who's in our region. I mean, I know that you know we play the winner of Ole Miss and BYU, and then I think um, Georgia State. Is that right? Baylor. And Baylor. You know, I mean, I. We just found out a couple hours ago. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about going down that far, um, you know, down the line. So will the guys have to watch that, that game on Tuesday, or will they be trying to do it as a travel and everything else? Well, I, we don't know because, um, you know, there have been several articles about NCAA tur tournament travel, uh, the availability of charter planes and charter aircraft. So I, I don't know if we're going commercial. Um, I don't know if we're going charter. I don't know if Tom Iser's taking us by bus. So we may be in the air when the game's going on. We may be landing at, you know, 4 30. I don't even know what time the game's going to be played in Dayton. So, um, you know, I would like to be able to be in a hotel room in Jacksonville already having practiced and be able to watch, watch the game. Um, you know, we'll have a great feel for both teams by then, uh, but to just sort of see how it plays out and, and how their kids respond in the tournament atmosphere and then knowing who we play. Uh, would be great, but uh, we don't really control that. Speaking of charters, you guys had Neil Diamond uh, playing to come back. What was that like? Was it kind of tricked out, kind of fun? No, I, you know, I, I don't think it. I mean, he didn't have like his autograph on the side of the plane, and you know, there weren't any guitars in the back. I think he just uh, rents it. You know, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really know how it works, but uh, I tried to sit in a few seats, so you know, maybe the talent level will be passed at some point. Thanks.